So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about something that most runners go through and it sucks and it hurts and it's painful and you don't want them. So how do you prevent shin splints? This is a question that's been going through my mind the last number of days and I've done some research on it and I've come up with some great information that I wanna share with the rest of you guys. So let's dive into it guys. How to uh, not get shin splints, how to recover from shin splints, how to find the cause, and then how to move on from it. I may not be able to run, but I can sure build a big fire. <laughs> I still have my Christmas tree, but I'm now burning it because I didn't want to get rid of it in the winter time. So I threw it in the backyard and I'm literally just burning the thing right now. My 20th wedding anniversary is tomorrow. So I have to go get a card from my wife. Well, that was an interesting conversation I had. I've also just got word that I don't have a doctor's appointment until July 29th, guys. July 29th is the, the time I have for a doctor's appointment. <laughs> when it rains, it pours, everybody. Oh my gosh, I am out again. And this time, it's not with my leg and it's not with a back. It's not with any of that. It's, it's something else. It's my thumb. All right, so if I can't run, I'm gonna start doing some home renovations. And today, it's a deck, with help with my neighbor, of course. The deck is literally rotted. Look at that, it broke. It's like 30 degrees out here. It's really hot. And all these screws are stripped. And uh, yeah. anyways, I'm just gonna keep on power tooling, baby. Broke another one. Happy anniversary to me and my wife, because today is our anniversary. And yeah, I'm taking a deck apart, but you know what? You gotta do what it is you gotta do. 20 years, baby, 20 years. Family comes first. Legs feeling better, <laughs> but my hands are taking a beating. <laughs> Oh my gosh, home improvements, guys. I'm not a home improvement guy, but I do like to do a little bit of demolition. I'm so grateful for my neighbor to come on over and give me a hand. I gotta keep moving forward. I gotta keep learning. I gotta keep doing the things I know I need to do. Ow, that really hurts. And I'm injured again. <laughs> yeah, I'm injured again. I don't know what it is. It seems like everything just seems to happen at once. Anyways, we'll get into that in today. But let's take a look at what happened at the physiotherapy. You just got it. You, you already pushed on it, right? Yeah. All is it? Is it? Yeah, like, it's it, all. It's all the way up. Like that's the center, and then it goes. But yeah. not on the bone itself. Like I feel all of that. I feel all of that. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah yeah yeah. Compared to here. Uh, yeah, I feel that a little bit, not too bad. You might want to go see, uh, we'll work on these guys here. Go see uh, Matt. Okay. And check out your mechanics here and see what he thinks. 
<laughs> you're a thought guy. Okay. The trails? Like I spent one week on the trails? So this only started happening when you started trail running. I believe it started to happen when I started adding in the yeah, trails. Yeah, that's what you told me. The, after the four days of trails yeah. you did, that's when you started having this problem, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Is that a lot of stability work when you run on the trails, right? What kind of shoes are you wearing on the trails? Are regular running shoes? Uh, no, 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 running trail shoes. Same brand, like same brand, but different model. Yeah, so your differential for medial tibial stress syndrome is is stress fracture, right? Okay. So that's what we just gotta keep our eye on. Now, chances are it's not, but you never know if that increase in it. Well, medial tibial stress syndrome, it can, it's probably what it is, but the problem is it's a, it can take a long time to get better when you have this kind of shin splint, right? Okay. It could just be muscle strain. Probably not. It seems more like an osteo reaction because it's right on the edge of the bone, right? So, okay, here's a question. What shouldn't I be able to do after everything you've felt so far? What shouldn't I be able to do if it was a stress fracture? You shouldn't be able to run. I shouldn't be able to run? Yeah, the pounding will really hurt it. Okay, well, maybe that's what it is because... Now, it's also, but the, you're, you have one spot that's quite sensitive, but it is seems to be a strip. And usually when it's a bit of a strip, it's probably not a stress fracture, right? Okay. If it's very point tender in one spot, that's more indicative of a stress fracture. Okay. And stress fractures usually happen when you load too soon, too much too soon. That's usually what happens, because your bone hasn't had a chance to remodel. Your bone's always remodeling, right? Going to run again? until I start figuring out all these different things and I'm gonna start building muscle. That's a good idea. Start with your core conditioning and all the strengthening. That's a great idea. Yeah, so I'm just, and I'm gonna, and I, I went on the elliptical trainer and that seemed to be okay. Yeah, you can cross train and really build cardio, right? Like you'd even have to run. Yeah, that, so. so I'm gonna start incorporating that. Um, I thought about going to like fit for less um, just to have access, because I don't have any weights at home, right? Yeah. Um, but I didn't want to do anything with the leg work until I figured out what's going on with my, like, I don't know. I mean, what are the other things that it can be other than a fracture? Well, like, what's that, your, like, what's your goal here? To run, to run a hundred mile race. Ah, uh, okay. That's my goal. Because I've run a 50, that was last October. And after my 50, I came back too soon, and then that's when everything started to happen. Right? Well, sometimes it's this that causes the pain. Right, I can do that. No, I don't think, I think it's, I think it's MCSS, I'm sure. Right, I mean, that's the one that's on. If it doesn't approve, then we gotta send you, right? But right now, I think it's still, mostly. Yeah, like, and you can start doing some proprioception work, right? Like, where you stand on one foot, Close your eyes. Yeah. Start doing yeah. like tree poses. Start doing. So kind of do a little bit. Start a little bit more yoga. Start doing some more proprioception stuff because that will help you when you're if you are running in gravel or under the ground. That yeah. will help your body. That will improve that a lot. And that's what goes after you get injuries. The proprioception system really takes a beating. Yeah. I think you need to go see him and just see what he thinks too. Yeah, really because that, well, that's why I wanted you to see these guys, right? Yeah, because that's horrible. Right, because I mean that's what it was. That's horrible. That's a lot of pressure. Right, that's what it was when I before I came to see you. I think is going on, and my physiotherapist thinks, and that is shin splints, medial tibial stress syndrome. Upwards to thirty-five percent of athletes are affected with this, and it's shocking. The more research I do to figure out what causes it and how it happens, and the things that you can do to help get over it learning i'm just going through the educational process and there seems to be so many different things to learn and i'm taking the opportunity now to kind of go through this but it affects so many flipping people from gymnasts to long distance runners to military dudes to dancers found out that it's flattening of the arch right over pronation uh, while standing walking running you know, participating in a sport that requires repetitive jumping or running. Well, that's, that's me. Our excessive hip motion, a high body mass index. Yes, I've gained a lot of weight and boom, there it is right there, right? How does it feel? It hurts <laughs> along the bone. Do I gotta do to relieve the pain? Icing the area for five to 10 minutes, one to three times a day. Uh, exercise, right? Uh, gently stretching the muscles around the shin, keeping the arch of the foot or the affected leg muscles, uh, hand or massage of the of the area 
these things can certainly help. And then, you know, you need to be able to strengthen, right, the, the weak muscles. And there are exercises that can increase your arch and shin muscle strength, right, decrease, it, de sorry, decrease over pronation, like the flattening out of the arch of the foot. Uh, calf and foot muscle stretches are really good. Leg, uh, single leg extensions, including squats, uh, reaching exercises of the heel raises, a modified takeoff and landing technique for jumping athletes, right? Modifying leg and foot control during walking and running, uh, suggestions for wet wear footwear that provide uh, better support for walking or exercising. So how can it be prevented in the future? Well, you know, obviously I need to get uh, an annual functional fitness examination, including strength, flexibility, mobility, and sport specific analysis perform dynamic stretches before exercising. I have to get better at that. And static stretches after exercising, and I've been better at that one already. Balance exercises on one leg, right? Which is uh, important. Perform strength and endurance exercises for foot and hip and pelvic muscles. Follow a recommended training program when starting out or increasing the exercise program. Right? Shin splints is commonly seen as early part of a person's training or at the beginning of an athlete's season. All exercise programs should uh, begin gently and progress slowly. Choose appropriate footwear for the activity that you're going to be performing. Choose appropriate cross training activities um, to help condition the core. And I got to get better at that. There are things that I can be doing to help the current situation. So what was the cause? Without seeing my doctor, but talking to my physiotherapist, what I can say is I think that this has all come about because I went out on the trails too fast, too soon, too much uh, fast running downhill. Um, there was a number of things and I honestly think that that is what's caused it. My elliptical training and then uh, on the bike, I would say that I'm excited to be doing that. Unfortunately, I'm injured. And I'm injured because <laughs> my thumb, I can't, my thumb is huge, right? <laughs> so the other day, remember, I was taking down the deck. Well, I smacked it on one of the boards and a hammer, and there was a lot of things that happened. And uh, it's, it's kind of big right now. So for the next, probably, I don't know, next week maybe, I'm probably going to be out of commission when it comes to that because of what I got to deal with. I can't hold anything. I can't be on a... On an elliptical, I can't hold on to the little things that go back and the handles that go back and forth. So I'm out of that. I can't ride a bike because I can't hold on to the handle rails. So I'm out for that. I tried swimming yesterday and that was okay, but I don't live close uh, by and that was on the day of, of when it happened. Uh, and it didn't necessarily feel so bad until this morning and here I am. So, but the good thing is <laughs> The deck's coming along quite nicely. Take a look. So as you can see, there's definitely some things going on with my shin splints or my tibial stress. Here's a little bit of an update, guys. I have an appointment with my doctor July 29th. <laughs> that's like, that's a long time away from now. I do have two appointments, one with uh, a guy to take a look at my feet to see if my arch is collapsing. Uh, and I do have another appointment with sports medical guy. And hopefully we can shed some light onto some of the things that's going on with my legs. I don't know why I didn't use compression socks, but they can really help. And I, when I look back on my running, I've run a lot of races with compression socks on. I don't know why I never used them to come back when I started running again. That could have been one of the things that could have helped. And I will be using those moving forward. So go get yourself some compression socks. It's not a guarantee it's gonna help, but it's better than nothing. So like I always say, get out and swim, run, bike, walk, do whatever you gotta do. Later.